Hello and welcome to Where You Not Entertained. I'm Daniel. I'm Rachel. And I'm James. And in this very special episode, <laughs> we're going to be talking about The Last Days of American Crime, which is a new Netflix original movie. Yeah. This one uh, it kind of made headlines for being the first movie to receive a zero rate, a zero uh, critic reviews on critic reviews. Yeah. A zero score on Rotten Tomatoes. So, um, you know, it ha- lives in that kind of infamy. Well, and so I was I was hoping what might come with that is like maybe some super cringy one-liners or something that could be like made fun of or so bad. It was kind of funny or kind of something. Uh, I was hoping. Yeah, no. I mean, I think this will have its fans because the, the movie made me think of what if you gave time Tommy Wiseau the sequel to natural born killers. Like this felt like natural born killers meets the room because it just is, it's, that is a, that is a very mean thing to say about natural born killers. Cause that was actually done really well. No, I'm saying that that was a really great movie, but like if you took that kind of style and motif and then gave it to somebody who is going to make it into the quality of the room. You know what it kind of, <laughs> It kind of reminds me of that old, like it's an old 90s movie with Pamela Anderson, uh, Barbed Wire. Barbed Wire? Yes. Oh, my God. Like it was not necessarily in like the scenery or anything, because that was a little more post, post-apocalyptic. And if I'm uh, not mistaken, that was based off a graphic novel as well. Yeah, I believe it was. Uh, but just like horrible acting Horrible directing, horrible writing. <laughs> oh my God, the writing in this was so bad. That is the best. Yeah. It's, it's trite. Like I mean, it's, it's so cliche. It doesn't even have stupid one liners. But it doesn't even right. make sense because <laughs> the quote that I most remember is kind of from the beginning when um, the girl walks up and she says, we're all just dogs. We want to hit the ones that love us. And I'm like, what the hell kind of dog do you have? My dogs right? never hit me, but I mean, maybe her dog throws hands. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she hits her dog. I don't. I don't know. It just it uh, made yeah. it made so little sense. Yeah. So let's do something a little radical and go, is there anything about this movie you liked? Would you give this a zero if you were writing a review for it? Um, I wouldn't give it a zero because there was actually effort. There were parts. Yeah. So this, this thing was way too long. <laughs> <laughs> My God, it was a schlog. If if you were to, was if so I was a critic and they were to ask me to write a back of the box uh, blurb for it, I'd say my fingernails have never been so clean after a movie <laughs> because I just sat there and cleaned my fingernails, yeah. waiting for this trash to be over. My God, but, please end. I no, I'll give it. There was a couple of moments when I laughed out loud because. <laughs> It was genuinely that bad, like when Michael Pitt axed his father and they both fell to the (laughs) ground at the same moment and that dark music played and it was just, ooh, masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. There were, I mean, there were, honestly, there were moments very, very, very brief, but there were moments in parts of the the movie that I was like, huh, well, they might be able to do something cool here. So, you know, it at least made me think that it it didn't. Yeah. It didn't fulfill that, but but it at least made me think, (laughs) Hey, maybe they're going to do something cool. 
Uh, no, they're not. Okay. I'll give it a half a star. For... I'd give it a full star. Out of no. we're talking ten stars or hey. five stars. No, it gets a half a star for well, we have to know, Michael five. Pitt's like attire through this movie. Okay, sure. Because yeah. he had some great jackets, and then I'll give it another half a point or star, whatever I said. Now we don't even know what we're doing anymore. Just because it had such a completely and utterly unhinged Michael Pitt, and he does such a good job at being just crazy as hell. Yeah, I loved him when he was in the Sandra Bullock movie, uh, Murder by Numbers. Yes. I liked that a lot. And I heard Funny Games was really great, but I don't think I've seen it. And he was really good in Hannibal. Yeah. So that was kind of another unhinged, but the writing was so much better for that. <laughs> well, yeah, so that's the thing. I mean, the people in this, and there, there are some names that are in this. It's not a... It's not a straight, like, unheard of cast or anything. Yeah, I mean, um, Charlotte Copley from uh, District 9. And yeah, Edgar Ramirez, Domino. Officer. I mean, <laughs> he's and he's been in a lot of things, actually. But he was so bad in this. <clears throat> there's So there's people that are in this that are not, like, we just went out and, and picked you off the street hoping that you can act. Um, they spent a few dollars getting a cast. Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely um, did. I don't know. Yeah. I do, are we talking, I do want to throw are we talking in talking 10 star or five I star? Um, ten. Well, because it makes a difference if we're talking sure. if yeah, we're talking out, the ten out star. Out of ten, it gets one star ten? from me. I'd okay. probably I'd probably give it two out of ten. I, yeah, I mean, I would say that I wouldn't give it a zero. Now, Fair. I think it does, it, I don't. I think as maximum would be a three if I was feeling generous. I'm not right now after sitting through that for two and a half hours. But like, I don't think it's actually a zero. Um, but it does kind of fail on everything you want a movie to be. Um, outside of a couple of action moments, like that still weren't that great, but they weren't terrible. And I do appreciate that the cars still had, uh, axles on them. Sure. I think that's most, probably cause they were too broke to remove them. <laughs> well, most, uh, most of the time you don't have that in a, you know, yeah. In scenes in movies because and it's fairly disabled. Dangerous. Because You're right. Axles it is fly off of the cars when you flip them. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, don't, <laughs> I think that, it, that I uh, okay. Well, I didn't really think of it in that light, so I guess it's even worse that that's, <laughs> that that's the case. Well, and but they, they it made it more realistic. That. It did. It did. They did have that Hummer that looked just like the modern fancy version of the Hammerhead Eagle Eye Thrust that. Jeremy Clarkson built in a shed. I was about to say, if anybody knows what that is. I honestly think that they just hand hammered this bullshit aluminum body on that car. Yeah, it was like they took it was like they took foil. They right. took tin foil and paneled the car in tin foil so that it looked like it was totally chromed out. Um there there's a <laughs> couple things that were so bad that I appreciated them. Um Okay. Like when they pull up to, um, God, I can't remember the character's name. Uh, Kevin's uh, parents' house, dad's house. Yeah. Yes. And the I can't remember the jerk's name either. The I guess the bad uh, enforcer. Yeah. The, the near the, the bad guy, the enforcer, bad guy. Yeah. Whenever he jumps in the car in the back seat, they pull up like maybe six feet before they stop the car. Right. Oh yeah. And yeah. it just Thanks seems, for joining the ride. <laughs> right. It seems so unnecessary in the weirdest way. And it was one of those things that I, I had to laugh out loud at the movie, unfortunately not with it. Um, and the fact that they made a movie that was two and a half hours long with a mildly decent premise. Yeah. But every person character in 
the movie was unlikable and the world that they were living in was garbage. So I kind of was like, is this like pro authoritarian? Cause I kind of feel like the API should be put in place. This, this world is terrible. Yeah, it was like there's just crime everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is this is how they're showing America now is like everybody's just gone crazy. Well, right. and talk about a strange time for this particular film to be released in a a time of police brutality and becoming mm. a bit of a police state and then there's this movie that's, you know, the police should take over and the government should control your brain. But I don't think that that's the thing. I think that they were not, I think they were actually actively saying that they shouldn't implement API because it, it was shown from the perspective of the, of, I guess the bad guys, but right at the same time, I don't, but they're framed as the heroes. That's what's so confusing about it. It's like an unintentional, attempt it's an unintentional selling of authoritarianism because of the fact that everything in this movie that's supposed to be cheered for is terrible and you're kind of like i you know i guess they all should be stopped from being criminals all the time um well, which I-, I feel terrible for saying that because api would be awful in the real world yeah i'm i'm no. just curious <laughs> how the police even work because i mean he drove straight through that border crossing and nobody chased him that was amazing too uh, also what the hell they kind of horse trucks are they driving that just blast through all these concrete barriers like they're nothing i did love that they had a helicopter and it didn't even follow the guy i know we just blasted just, into canada it's mindless i don't understand it at all no, but, I don't. I and, uh, I also didn't understand the fire in this movie because, so in the very beginning, that guy obviously drops his cigar into a bathtub full of gasoline and exples. Like a, he, not he even did. like grenades. It exploded like it's pyrotechnics. Huge. And and yeah. so how is he still? in one piece enough to come splash some gasoline at Edgar Ramirez. Yeah. He's like playing Darkman. Then is in a fire engulfed trailer and gets pulled out with zero burns. Yeah. I literally have a note in my, on my page. I took notes cause I had plenty of time to write them down. <laughs> um, that I don't think they know how fire works and then, or bullets for that matter. I, or car I know crashes. they don't know how bullets work. <laughs> <laughs> or car crashes either. Or car crashes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, oh my God, incompetence after incompetence. But I mean, some of it was fun and some of it's movie mad, you know, you suspension and disbelief. So I, I didn't care that much about that stuff, but it was inconsistent I, too, which was part of the problem. I cared about the, the car chase gunfight. My God! After the fire, that I totally. How many bullets? Yeah, (laughs) can fire into a car? Like, like, are they all lined with? It would have to be like bullet deflecting material. Like nobody got hurt. The one guy got hurt at the very beginning. Yeah, and then nobody else got hurt, and they dumped hundreds of rounds into each other's vehicles. Yeah, it was insane. Like, how do you? How do you miss that close? <laughs> they were like four right. feet away, and he basically stuck his gun through the window of the other car and shot down into the seat. Yeah, where and he was. They walked away, <laughs> and then later in the movie, it's pitch dark, and at you know, 30 yards with a handgun, he shoots two cops through a car <laughs> in a black alley. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> while, oh while he's under the influence of the API and a drug that's supposed to scramble your brain. And he's been shot. Andy's right. been shot. Also, did I misremember or did Michael Pitt's character get shot when they were in his father's office? He did. He, he got did. shot in the like l- upper stomach. And yeah. then didn't um, his sister shoot him when he went downstairs? Yes. I'm pretty sure she shot uh, him in the like, shoulder. In the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. And then the next time we see him, he's a hundred percent fine. Uh well, 
there is a small explanation for that. Uh, is it good? Uh, Brick gave him, whenever they split ways, Brick gave him a, like a med kit to clean himself up with. Um, and so whenever he takes his shirt off, when he gets back to his uh, building, he has a patch over his, over the bullet under his, like, or at the top of his stomach, at least. I didn't see one on his shoulder, but at the same time, that's not how gunshots work. You're not right. just going to be yanking your shirt off like that if you have a hole. Well, if you get yeah. shot directly below twice. your rib cage. You can't just put a Band-Aid on that and be like, all right, let's go do a bank heist. Yeah, I'm 100%. Right. Let's go. Oh, my God. He was clinging to the bottom of that car. And so did Brick get shot at point-blank range with a shotgun into a bare chest, or did he have a bulletproof vest on? He did not have a bulletproof he, vest on. He had a on. T-shirt on. Okay. Did he got shot in the stomach at point-blank range? Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't have been able to walk. No. Oh, he absolutely he spine out at bet. That would be like best case scenario for he him. Could totally walk, and he could drive an eighteen wheeler for miles and miles. Yeah, for hours. I'm guessing for hours. Right for hours. And also, hours. she wasn't injured. Why couldn't she drive? <clears throat> right. She didn't have the guts to run the the barricades. That must have been what it is. Yeah, exactly. She needed him to take the bullets. That, Which is crazy. That nobody because- got hit with. <laughs> yeah, and at the same time, she had tons of guts earlier in the movie. So it was, yeah, inconsistent is definitely a title for this movie. <laughs> but she consistently had absolutely no emotion and no chemistry. Uh, most of the characters could be described that way. Yes. Yeah, except she got even worse when that FBI agent that she suddenly was best friends with who would let her into the tower... Yeah. That she had even less chemistry with him and I thought how is that possible? That's weird. Um they speaking of not having chemistry, they had some weird thing where they would stare at each other. Not not just those two people uh, characters, but all the characters would stare at each other for really weird lo- periods of time and they would do it at very close range for some reason. And, and I like do not so understand so. it. It was uh, 13 minutes into the movie, I checked, uh, because I was concerned at that point that staring was going to be a problem. (laughs) In two two and a half hours, and my suspicions were uh, confirmed. I think that uh, maybe it was was the delay between the director saying action and them starting their lines, and nobody bothered to cut it out. Oh, my God. It was, yeah, it was the staring and the zooming. Yeah. Every time they'd stare, they'd just suddenly start to zoom at the end of the shot and then cut. Yeah. They had some great music. They They paid for some great music, definitely. They They used it exactly wrong, and it was always jarring and uncomfortable, but the songs were great. They had some cheesy music moments in there, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah this one was terrible man it was a horrible I, movie i kind of like you less as a friend for making me watch this i'm okay with that i know but, uh, <laughs> I just, it left me with so many questions and even now i just i have nothing but questions because where did she get that ball gag <laughs> yeah right <laughs> like did he just keep that in his office or where did she get she the bomb leave? Why did she have a different jacket? <laughs> she has she ha- on. Her- why did she have her jacket at the end? <laughs> she has a shiny pleather jacket, and then they cut to her in the car, and it's not shiny anymore. <laughs> well, at the very end, she's got her old jacket back. Yeah, and she didn't take any Which clothes. Which is like with you her, didn't take so- anything with you. <laughs> she just hunted that specific jacket down into a shop. It it was terrible, and initially I thought, oh, hey, it's got. A 0% rating. This would be funny. And then I saw it was two and a half hours long. I didn't realize that until 45 (laughs) minutes in. And that was where I wanted to like hit the panic button and leave. No. When I realized it was two and a half hours long at 45 minutes in, I was very displeased. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I bet you were. (laughs) 
because <laughs> I was like 45 minutes. I've got to be like three quarters. Like it's got to be like an hour and a half, maybe right. maybe half the movie through. And I was like, I'm like a third of the way into this thing. <laughs> I was, oh, I was so upset. It just keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the very end when they're driving. You're like, it yeah. just they're just going and going. Oh, they followed her forever oh on my that God. road. Yeah. I was like, just in the thing already. All, all those terrible, like, mid-90s cars, and then she shows up in a G-Wagon, and it's like, where was the budget the rest of this movie? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I have not been this disappointed. It's, okay, so I will say this. Granted, normally, I can tell from like a cover of a movie mm-hmm. if it's going to be total shit. Usually. Sometimes I'm wrong. But usually I can, and they say never judge a book by a cover, but you can definitely judge a movie by the cover. A lot of the time. A lot it's of the t- time. It's, it says, a, yeah, they, they spend a lot of time crafting those to make them say something about the movie. Exactly. And so you can usually tell when it's a crappy movie. So I have avoided watching those movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't do that this time, uh, but this Can is. You understand why you had done it previously. <laughs> this, this was one of the worst movies that I have ever seen. <laughs> this is yes. I was going to say that if you ask me, no, no, I was not entertained. I was not In entertained. Fact, I was very ready for this movie to be completed, <laughs> and I quickly turned it off afterwards. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry exactly. if people worked really hard on this, but it it ain't I hope you got your paycheck already. Right. Yeah, I got like 90 seconds of ent- entertainment out of this. Well, I am going to force you guys to tell me what your favorite scene was. That's fine. Yeah. Because I, 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 I need to know because this is going to be the ones where I'm like, oh, that's a terrible scene for every yes. one of them. And so... I, I think that I'll enjoy that. Oh, maybe. So I'm going to start. Okay. What you got? My favorite scene was the very first scene of the movie. In, in the, the reason? Yeah, in the in apartment. In the bathroom, yeah. Yeah. In the bathroom in that little apartment or hotel or whatever the hell it was supposed to be. I think it was an apartment. Yeah. Uh, the reason it is my favorite scene is because at that point, there was no indication at how bad the rest of the movie was going to be. I would disagree with you. Well, yeah, I totally no. disagree with you. The way that they were keep the way that they the the protagonist had no emotion or anything likable about him at all, while clearly being the lead in the movie, I w- I was immediately concerned. And then the I mean, weird that's... camera angle, the weird shots of them putting their faces right up next to each other. Yeah. That's not abnormal for the beginning of a movie, though. Okay, fair enough. For not liking the very first person you see. I mean, that's kind of... It's it's not unheard of, but... So, yeah. Uh, Everything after that. (laughs) (laughs) Horrible. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, it was... This it's was your horrible. favorite scene because you didn't know how horrible the rest of it was going to be yet. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. That was it. I'm dead. All right. What about you, Rachel? I could take the easy out and say it was watching the credits roll. But <laughs> I love it. That is great. <laughs> but I'm going to pick something that I actually enjoyed in this film. Uh-oh. Oh, my yeah. God. And it's it's the scene I already referenced where Kevin kills his father and mm, yeah. his dad's like, I shot your mother. And it's just this like they stare at each other incredibly uncomfortably and this dark music plays and then he hatchets him in the head and they simultaneously fall to the ground. Yeah. And it was terrible, but I couldn't stop laughing because it was that terrible. It's really bad. Fair enough. (laughs) It's really bad. All right, James, your turn. Um, Mine was early on in the bar 
when um god i can't even keep their names in my head when brick meets uh shelby yeah and the narration and the <laughs> horrible about the flirting <laughs> and the overextended sex scene mm. i was like wait are they going for like late night showtime like movie or something here right at that moment i knew exactly what movie i was going to be watching i still it's thought i only had movie. to watch I still only thought I had to watch an hour and a half of it, so I wasn't quite that upset yet. But that that was just, I was like, oh my God, this is the worst. Everything that would make a movie good is missing here. Yes. I totally Except for setting. They had a good set. Yeah, they had, yeah, they had a decent set. Yeah, I forgot about that scene. That was she just walked up and sucked on his ice cube and stuck it back in his glass. And now looking back at it, when she comes into the room and describes herself, that's her narrating. Yes. Yeah. She yes. describes herself as the kind of woman that when she walks into the room, the entire mood changes. That's a little pretentious. It's, yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> It's so awful that it is clearly my favorite scene. Yeah. Fair enough. Because she did go from, I want to get married to let's have sex in a dirty toilet. Right. With like no dialogue in between. So it was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's weird, man. (laughs) It was uncomfortable. So I can sum it all up like this. These are obviously not the last days of American crime because every time somebody plays this movie, a crime is being committed against them. (laughs) Well, um, yeah. This one uh, deserves a lot of the ridicule it's getting. Yes, it does. uh, (laughs) I I don't really, uh, I don't usually like to say that. (laughs) No. We try to. We try to we look literally at the side made of a movies. podcast. Yeah, we made a podcast on that premise that we're just looking for the entertainment. And this wasn't even it <laughs> straddled this uncanny valley of not being bad enough to be funny and not being good at all. It right. seemed impossible. Yes. Because you usually fall over this precipice really fast. Nope, this is just some black hole of unenjoyment extended unenjoyment very extended very yeah. extended oh. Uh, oh. and on that terrible disappointment <laughs> yeah um normally our episodes are 30 minutes long but i don't even want to do a 30 minute episode it doesn't deserve that so we're going to cut it short here at about a little after 28 minutes sound good to you guys sounds great All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed our conversation about the movie more than you did the movie itself, because that would say something terrible about our podcast. Uh, If you did, please go online, like and subscribe and join us next time on Were You Not Entertained?